this Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, we were, we're cheering for, you know, the Chiefs, and we're cheering for the Eagles, and we also mentioned the refs, but do you know one major component that we forgot, that who the real winner is? Jesus. Well, Jesus is the church answer, but I was going to go with commercials. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you want the commercials to win? The commercials are also a lot of fun, and, uh, and one of the commercials, actually, that, that if you're not aware, it, Jesus is going to be at the Super Bowl. There's a, there's a campaign out called as the He Gets Us campaign. I don't know if you've seen any of these commercials before in different ways. They're going to be showing actually during the Super Bowl. There's going to be one between the first uh, quarter and the second quarter, and there's also a longer one in the second half. And now what's so cool about these commercials is they, they, they bring the conversation to the table about faith. So many people talk about the commercials uh, you know, during the Super Bowl and afterward, and maybe this is an opportunity for you to talk with somebody, maybe at a party that you're at, or maybe on, on Monday when you're back at, at work or at school, and, and as this conversation comes up, talk about that. What does that represent? Or, or maybe it's an open door to talking about faith. And so I think it's exciting to see that and to, to be a part of that, and so I hope we'll leverage that and use that in some way. Because here's the thing, I also want you to know that we want to partner with you to help accomplish our mission, leading others to know Christ, that beginning next Sunday, we're starting a new series that's called um, Asking for a Friend. Asking for a Friend. And in this series, over the next several weeks leading up to Easter, in this time of preparation that we do every year, we're going to dive into some of those core questions about purpose, about who is Jesus, what is the Holy Spirit, how do we pray, like questions that people have. Why did Jesus have to die? If there was ever a time for you to bring and invite somebody who's seeking, who's searching, who just wants to know more, or wanting to go deeper in these pieces, beginning next Sunday is the time to do that. And we also have a devotional journal that's available for free. We gave those out earlier in the year. I want you to get into those this week. Every week there's a daily scripture. Take some time to prepare. And as we talk about that on Sunday morning, it's available for all of us. We've got some in the lobby and over the next uh, couple of weeks as well as you bring guests and friends to be a part of that. Well, when I think about the Super Bowl and I think about what we're talking about being a team and our mission, there's a lot of fun things that, uh, as we th that, that relate to the Super Bowl. And, and when we think about the history of the game, do you guys know who played in the first Super Bowl? Who, won, who played and who won? The Packers won, and they played none other than the Kansas City Chiefs in that first Super Bowl, right? So there's some fun things in, in the history of the Super Bowl. Do you know that there are um, four teams that have never won the Super Bowl? <laughs> yes, our Browns. Yes, for sure. The Browns, not too far further from the north where I grew up in Michigan. The Detroit Lions have never even been in the Super Bowl. And you've got the Texans and, and, and the Jaguars as well. What's interesting is even with these teams, when they don't make the Super Bowl, there's a relentless mission to win. Every team knows. And, and think about playing in the league for over 50 years or what, what, what's today's Super Bowl, 50-something, 57. Imagine for 57 years, every year, realizing you have not won the Super Bowl, but still every year you come back. The Lions and the Browns didn't just leave the league and say, forget it, we just can't seem to do this thing, we're going home. Right? They show up every year with the hope that they're going to win because knowing what the Super Bowl is, knowing what the win is, is so important. And to come back to that time and time again. And I think about the effort and the money and the time and the energy that is spent, millions of dollars for this, this event, this game, and this league. I think about what it would look like. Could you imagine if somebody from outer space or somebody who has, knows nothing about uh, what's going on observes what happens at the Super Bowl and during this time? Imagine that. And they, they do a little bit of studying, do a little bit of history, and they go, man, there are these muscular millionaire athletes, right? Millionaires, the rich people in this world that are, that are muscular. They play this game. They gather on some grass, and then they give all their energy, everything they have, to move this inflated piece of leather across an imaginary made-up chalk line. Like, what's going on? And then the people are cheering wildly, and they get spent all this money, and they go through all this effort for what? Now, sport is fun, and, and sport teaches us about life, and, and it's a great way of camaraderie. But what's the bigger purpose? What are the things that we are going to leverage our lives for? What's the energy is it all about winning a Super Bowl? Well, that's what's clear for the teams. But even those of faith in those environments, and there's so many great testimonies of athletes and coaches and owners who, who have a faith in Jesus Christ, and they understand their purpose differently. I love what the owner of the, uh, of the Chiefs said, Clark Hunt. He was talking about the game, and he was being interviewed, and he said, we try so hard in our family to get this right as they are people of faith. 
He said, we got to get this right. And the first and foremost is faith, then family, then football. We can't get that order wrong. So even when they're pursuing this game, they understand there's something more important to pursue. And it's our faith, and it's where we find life. It's where we find hope. And so I think about us, and I think about our journey, and say, what is for us the goal? As we are Team MPC, as we are talking about being together for the win, what do we do? What is our mission? What's our Super Bowl? What is our purpose? What's God calling us to do? And so we come back to the mission, the goal, the purpose, and we say at the end of every worship service, our mission statement, doing whatever it takes to help people experience life to the fullest in Christ. Now, we don't want that just to become rote and a phrase that we say. We want to remind ourselves all the time, this is why we do what we do. This is why we come together. This deserves our best energy because life in Christ is, is what brings us fullness. That's what brings us alive. And so when we will do whatever it takes to experience that kind of life, that's what we get to do. That's why I love to get up here. That's why I love to do this and get their team together and work with our staff and our board and our church and together to say, this is the mission we are on, to watch people coming to faith and to watch the light bulbs go on and to find that freedom and to find that hope. Three words you hear here, will hear a lot over the, when you spend time with Meadow Park. It's belonging, believing, and becoming, right? Belong, believe, become. Why is this so important? Because we understand that the way we experience life to the fullest is to experience community, to experience what belonging really looks like, to be known, to be loved, to know others, because we never know how much we need community until what? We need community. And to have that there and to be surrounded by that in a Christian, Christ-centered community, growing in faith, that's the believing part. That we know what we believe, that we don't have to be adrift, that we don't have to wonder what is truth, what is not truth. We have a foundation. We're growing in our faith. We're believing. We come and worship. We understand that there's more to this life. There's a God, there's a creator who loves us and who wants to give us life, and we grow in that belief. But it's not just for us to hang out and be a community that knows uh, God and, and hangs out together. It's about becoming, becoming who God created us to be individually and together as a church. What are we striving for? What are we, how are we making a difference in this world? What gifts has God given us for us to leverage into the world around us? And so that's, that's the way we approach what we do. It's our mission. It's the way we approach it. But just like in, in, in football, that's the, you, know, you want to get to the Super Bowl. You want to win the games. But every coach has a game plan. Every coach, every team has a playbook. And every year it might look a little different depending on who the players are and how you've been performing and your strengths and your weaknesses. And so at Meadow Park, we have a, a playbook every year, and it's called our ministry map, an M-A-P, our ministry map, our ministry action plan. Every year we work together with the staff and the board and together with me, and we, de we determine what is it that we're, we're aiming for for the next year. What are the things that we need to do to help us accomplish the mission better, to strive for that? And so um, this, is, this is what we, we work together with. And so last year, this is kind of like, I want to do a little season review, right, where we finished 2022. I don't know if you received my, my weekly newsletter. There's an impact report over the past year. There's pastor's reports. But I want to highlight some things. Because last year, our goal was renew. God is doing a new thing. It wasn't just about the renew campaign, but the whole year looking at God doing a new thing. You remember if he, Isaiah 43, 19, our key verse from the series when we talked about renew, right? See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? And that's that new life that we were experiencing last year and that, that God has been bringing into our church. And so as I look back at the last season, I want you to know we've had some great wins under our belt last year. If I were to put a win-loss record, we had a winning season last year for sure as I look back on that year. And I just see new growth and new life just year over year from January to January. We're about 35% more in-person attendance right now than we were just a year ago. That's significant. That's huge, and it's not just people returning. Yes, after COVID, absolutely. It's those of you who've been joining online and watching and saying, you know, I want to see an experience in person. It's some of you who came new in this last year saying, you know, I want to be a part of Meadow Park Church. And so we're seeing our lobbies more full. We're seeing more people coming and saying, hey, I'm new here. Over 70 some that have said, hey, I, I want you to know who I am and connect with you and meet the pastors and discover MPC as we, as we connect with individuals. It's exciting to see. When you think about our life groups last year, we had a great uh, resurgence in our, in our life groups. We have four new groups that brought our, our uh, life group total to 17 groups. 
And we had 10 new leaders that stepped in in different ways, saying we're going to lead these groups and, and help connect people. That is awesome. Uh, probably, I think over 80% of our, our regular Sunday morning attendance is connected in some way to a life group. That's incredible. Because we understand the importance of moving from rows to circles and saying we want to connect with one another. Of course, one of the greatest highlights of last year, I think for all of us, we had 25 baptisms last year. 25 people declaring they are all in in faith. <laughs> saying God is changing, God's doing something in my life. And so we celebrate that. That is one of our biggest victory points that we celebrate is baptism. And we also saw some great things happening in our student ministry. We were able to bring Tim and Becky on board here. We're so glad to have you guys on our team. And, and, uh, and just watching the students, you know, coming and what's happening on Sunday nights. And I believe nearly 60 first-time students came through just in this past year. Now, granted, not everyone sticks and stays, but their friends are inviting their friends. And they're coming and they're experiencing some great things. Here's a picture of them at the, the Ohio State Youth Convention where, uh, again, took a great team and just watching them enjoying uh, just, just ministry and growing in faith together and their friendships. Fantastic. And then I mentioned, you know, the Renew campaign. What a great win for last year. When we talked about the, the six phases that we're planning over the next three years of how to renew our church inside and out, but that it wasn't just about the physical building but about spiritual renewal. And that was a part of the baptisms we shared and the fasting and the, and the studying together. So that was incredible. And the generosity that you displayed that allow us to do the things that we're going to be doing this year that I'll share about in just a little bit. Also, our Children's Center. Some of you, many of you know, some of you may not know, we have a day, uh, every day a Children's Center here that, that serves five days a week, families throughout our community over 50 years. And uh, COVID was so hard on the Children's Center. It was incredibly difficult, and as families, uh, you know, even as we shut down, and, and, and families that had to pull kids from, their, from the center for different reasons, but this last year to see the resurgence again, to see that we're serving over 100 children again and their families is an incredible uh, rebound in that ministry. And the reality is there's, there's children on a wait list to get in. They want to get in, but, but we need more staff. And so actually that's something you can be praying for is that God would, would send and, and bring us just godly uh, men or women that want to serve in that ministry and, and reach out to the community. And maybe even you're here today. Maybe you just want to serve part-time or, or, you know, one day a week or a month and, and help us out as a sub. Let us know because this is incredible what God is doing there and we want to continue to see that going. So those are just some of the highlights. And then I just thought about just some individual things, some things I just, as I reflect back on last year. For me, obviously, I, I spend a lot of time with the preaching, and so I think about all the different teachings that we did. And we think very intentionally as a staff, where is our church? What do we need to hear? What do we need to teach on? And maybe just even as you see some of these graphics, reminding you of some of the things that we have been teaching and talking about this past year. And who can forget Live Love Sunday? How many of you were a part of Live Love Sunday when we went out and we served the community? The church has left the building. Yes, over two, just about 200 of us going out and serving was one of the highlights of the year for me as well. Earlier in the year, last year, we had a marriage date night. How many of you were part of the marriage date night? That was a fun night when we were up in the student center and we were playing some games and, and enjoying some time together. We had team MPC nights. Uh, we've got another one coming up on March 7th. Those are always a blast. And, uh, and we're going to have another one coming up here very soon. And then I had to throw this one in here because it's about throwing things. It was the axe throwing. That was a lot of fun, right? How many of you enjoyed axe throwing um, <laughs> on Father's Day last year? So I look back on that season and we see that there is just a lot of belonging, believing, becoming, what God is doing. But we're in a new season. We're in a new year. Where do we go now? What's next for us? And so, again, we work together with our leadership team and, and saying, what's our focus for 2023? And the focus that I want to share with you is, is this, and what I felt God was leading us to is to say, get ready. I love that phrase, get ready. <laughs> get ready, it's about to go down. Get ready, it's about to happen. God is stirring, something is moving. And I love this verse, Galatians 6, 9, and it speaks to me personally and I believe to us as a church. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. I mean, it's just a verse that reminds us to keep going. Keep pursuing. Keep doing. Do what God has called you to do. Don't give up. Don't lose focus. Don't lose heart. And what we're seeing is we've not done that. We've continued to press on, to push through, to come out of this time of COVID, to see the new life that God is bringing. And I believe it's a time for us now to say, get ready. The blessing is coming. God is bringing. God is moving in that way. And so we talked about as a, as a council, as a staff, what does that look like? What are the priorities? 
And by the way, I just want to show you a picture here of our, our advisory council. This, this is a great team that I get to work with on a, on a, on a regular basis. And, and uh, Kurt Walters on the right there is a, a, a non-resident. He's a pastor in, in Indianapolis and, and Fishers, and he serves on our board. And we've got Lisa Osh, and, and we've got John Edwards, and Denny Pergram, and, and Jeff Hatties, our, our chair, Vanessa Chow, Andy Teeter, Chris Kinworthy, and, uh, and then that dude on the right is me, or left is me. Um, and of course, uh, Roger McDaniel also just works alongside as a staff on the council, and our treasurer, Gary Childs, uh, as, as well as involved. So we got a great team as we uh, plan and think about what is next for the church. So what does it look like to get ready? The first thing this next year is probably not a surprise for you. One of the things we're going to focus on is the renew phases. We've, we've, we've gone through the campaign. Now it's time to roll these out. When we started the campaign, my hope was that we would be able to raise enough money up front that we could tackle phase one, the renovation of this space. Well, you guys blew that out of the water, and we have enough resources that came in early in the campaign to do not only phase one, but also phase two, which is addressing our parking lot. And so we're going to do that, and I believe this year we're already working on phase three now. And remember, we're doing this all debt-free, so as the money comes in, and that's the, phase three is the renewing of our children's center um, and these bathrooms out here. So if we can tackle all three phases in a year, you think we can do that in this next year? That put us ahead of the game, and that's pretty exciting. But, uh, but this is what's coming, and so we need to be praying just for the whole work and the process that's being done. Um, but I also want to let you know that this is, this is happening now, tons of work behind the scenes, and we're all going to be affected by it here very soon when on March uh, 19th will be our first worship service in the gym. We're going to be worshiping Sunday mornings in the gym for about six to seven weeks as we uh, renovate in here. And by the way, if this is the time for you to say, hey, I can help you know, tear up some carpet and, and move some pews, today is the day where you can begin to let us know that, uh, that you're available for that. Um, we've mentioned this a couple times. We'll have another, a third table there besides uh, uh, Phyllis and Jeff with the advisory council and Shannon and Tim for the Honduras trip. We're also going to have a table with Rick Knox for the Renew uh, re, uh, uh, renovation. So if you want to find out what times and what's needed, go and talk to um, find Rick's, Rick and find that, that table um, in the gym because we can do some of this work ourselves and do that together. So anyway, tons of exciting stuff. That's something we just now are working out. The second thing, though, as we talk about getting ready, getting ready is preparing for growth and adding a second service. We really believe it's time to get back to a second service. We're still looking at the timing of that. We believe it's going to be in the fall that we're aiming for. And so that's part of the, the growth. That's part of the opportunities to create space for new folks, to create more opportunities. But when that, and, and, and so that we have that available and we have that space and we believe that's part of the getting ready. And so that means that we have to get a lot of other things ready as a church to, to prepare for that. And that leads us to the third goal besides adding that second service is expanding Team MPC. And when I say Team MPC, that's anyone who serves on any of our ministry teams. We really do not like the, the V word here at the Meadow Park, the volunteer word. Volunteer. When you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you don't volunteer. You serve. You serve. It's who you are. It's what you do. It's an outflow. It's not a, I give you this much time. It's just who we are. And so we want to embody that, that volunteer, not the volunteer, we want to embody the serving part of that. It's so hard to not use that word because they're so used to that. But when we serve and when we give, and so we want to expand, we use that term, Team MPC, to, to, to come together in that way. In Matthew 9, 37, Jesus said this in 38, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. And that's what we're asking. We're asking for God to send more workers, and who are the workers? That's us to send into the field, to work, to harvest, to, to see what God is doing and to be ready for what God is doing. And so we look at some of our teams, and, and quite honestly with you, post-COVID, we've lost some of the volunteers. <laughs> there's that word again, right, that we have. I tell you, there's no other word in the English language. It's just going to be something we got to fight. But we wanna, we've lost some of Team MPC, and we want to rebuild some of these teams. And so we look at these ministries and say, where can we step in? How can we serve? In our, and I think about our, our Park Kids area. Especially as we're thinking about going to two services, right? We need ex to expand our park kids ministry and, and our hosting teams. Maybe you can shred on the electric guitar. Or you can lay down a sick beat on the drums. I mean, let us know. We, we'd love to continue to, to add and expand in worship or in technology or photography or, or all kinds of opportunities for you to give and for you to serve. Life group leaders. If you want to help people experience community, you want to start a group or be a part of that, we need to expand Team MPC. Part of what we're looking at doing this year, too, 
is adding a couple of new teams that we need to, to relaunch and, or, or start. And that is, one is an events team. And uh, we do a lot of fun things here at the church, a lot of opportunities to connect and, and, and relate with one another. And we really need that extra support to help with setup, to help with teardown, to help with planning and executing as these uh, events uh, are a larger and larger part of what we do as a church and take more um, effort. Another one is our missions team. Now, we are going to Honduras, but we also have partnerships in Lebanon and with uh, Children of Promise. And so we want to continue to build those relationships. We'd like to build up to three missions teams a year uh, that go at least every year to, with our partners. And so if you have a heart for that, uh, let us know because we're building a missions team. And this third one will tap into a different part of um, the way that some of you are wired, and that's the grounds beautification team. I threw that beautification in there. It's not just a grounds team. We wanna, we, I want Meadow Park to be like people to drive by and stop and go like, did you, do you see how, that is so beautiful. Like, you see the way they maintain, like, those flower beds? And, I mean, we have a great grass crew already that, you know, is cutting grass, but different ways where, where a team would say, we own how this place looks from the entrances to everywhere, because it's an impression and it's a way that we represent to the community, the renewal that God is bringing and doing. And so if you want to be a part of that, let us know. So team night's coming up. That's a great place. If you're not serving or would like to know how to be involved, come to that on March 7th. So that's part of expanding Team MPC. Now another major focus, the fourth of our five that I want to share with you, is the launching of our next-gen ministry. Now we have ministry of the next generation through Park Kids and our student ministry, but what we're working on right now and wanting to do is to create a comprehensive approach from birth through college that identifies the specific needs at every stage and works together to, to, in the values and the vision that we work together as a church in a more cohesive way to really address the, the needs, the opportunity of ministering to the next generation. And we have been so pleased with the work that, that Tim has been doing with our student ministry that we have made him our next-gen pastor that oversees all of those areas from birth through college. So let's uh, give uh, some exciting news on that. We have great uh, coordinators in our, in our Park Kids area, and Tim has already been working with them, and, and we're going to work on this together over the next several months, developing this plan and wanting to roll out a next-gen ministry this fall and, and, and what that looks like. So this is the time for you to say, I want to be involved with serving the next generation and being a part of pouring into that. We know how desperately that is needed. Talk to Tim. Let him know, hey, where can I step in? How can I serve this, this generation? And then fifth is this re-engaging missions and outreach. We talked already about uh, wanting to expand our missions team and, and, and getting back on, on the mission field and building these partnerships and these relationships. Not just money, but people connecting in that way. I would love everyone in, for everyone in this church, in a matter of, you know, in a cycle of about three to five years, that you would go on a missions trip. That that would be something that you could experience and say, I, I want to do that. And as a church, we want to provide more of those opportunities. But part of expanding that mission with Honduras being that first step back into that post-COVID now for us is another thing. We want to develop a signature local ministry a signature outreach ministry here. We already have a great ministry through our Children's Center. That's a signature part of who we are as Meadow Park. And we do all kinds of partnerships with organizations in the community and organizations that we open our building to. But we're really seeking what is the heartbeat of Meadow Park that can make a significant difference in this community that we own, that we lead, that we grow over years. And we really want to be praying about that and saying, God, what's the heartbeat of this church? And where do we want to step in on that? And so Kyle um, Yonkman, our outreach pastor, and uh, as a team of staff, we're, we're going to want to hear from you as well. What is it that makes our heart beat faster? What is a signature ministry that we can engage in? So I know you're hearing a lot of details, but I kind of want to pull the curtain back a little bit about what's happening behind the scenes in leadership and how we approach the ministry that we're doing. And the reason being, it's not just the pastors and the staff that are doing this. It's us as a congregation. It's us together that needs to get ready, that needs to be about what God is doing. And so I, I think about this phrase today. We're talking about together for the win. If we want to win, if we want to see this, it has to be together. It has to be us working in, in, in partnership and really being that team. And I get to speak to you as Coach Mark. <laughs> I coach in soccer and coach, and it's about, I can't get out on the field when my daughters are playing soccer. That would be frowned upon, right? I have to stay on the sidelines and, and, and through instruction and let them do the goal scoring and the defending and the playing. And as a church, we get to partner in that together, but it takes the team to do that. 
I love the, the quote from Mike Tomlin, Pittsburgh Steeler. Any P P Pittsburgh Steelers head coach? Any fans here today of the Steelers? Got a couple, a couple of you. He coached uh, them to the Super Bowl, and here's what he said. It's not about what you're capable of. It's about what you're willing to do. It's not just what we're capable of. Church, Meadow Park, we're capable of so much. We're capable. We're doing all kinds of things, but, but it's what are we willing to do? When we say whatever it takes, are we willing to do that? And I just want to challenge you today with a couple of things as we close, as I, s I share all these great opportunities. But what it's going to take, it's going to take each and every one of us. And I think about these words, invest and invite. If you could just hold on to these two words, invest and invite, if every one of us would invest and invite, what difference would that make? What difference would it make if we invested in this place at a new level, in a different capacity, and stepping up in a different way to say, I am all in, and I'm ready to invite. I'm ready to, to, to share what Christ has done. As we think about this, and as we think about what it means to, to invest and invite, I have three questions I just want you to think through for yourself. The first is this, what position am I playing on Team MPC? If we're talking about investing, what position are you playing? Can you identify and say, this is my lane, this is my part, this is how I contribute, this is what I'm doing to advance this mission to move us towards the win, to be able to identify that. And if you don't know what that is, come talk to us. We, there's nothing better than when somebody comes up and says, you know what, I'd love to serve. Where do you need me? How can we help? That is a wonderful thing to hear. Talk to us on that. The second way we invest, and it's quite practical and, and, and important, and it's this, is how much do I need to increase my giving? This church, and it, the financial piece is, is so critical. It's such an important part about what we do. It's how we fund the things that we are doing, and you have been so generous in this past year. But it's a time for us every year. It's important for me to remind you, as it is for me, to step back and look at my finances and say, okay, how can I take another step in my generosity? Have our finances changed? Have we gotten a raise? Has there been an increase? Have we added income? What are we wanting to support? And then to step back and say, all right, how can we take a step forward and grow? Some of you have maybe been coming for a while and have, have never supported any of the ministry here financially, and that's okay. It's our gift to you. It's, it, it, we, we don't ever require that. We don't follow up. We don't tap. I don't call you up. We don't tap you on the shoulder saying, where's the money? It's a gift, but I invite you to say, be a part of that. Take a step in and say, I just want to start. Let me just be a part of this awesome stuff that's happening that I know I am also supporting that. And if you're doing that, we thank you. And you assess and say, how can I grow towards tithe giving? How can I be generous in that way? And again, I just am blown away by the generosity of this church, even as we have been talking about the Renew Initiative and, 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 and the way you've been working. But this is a time to think about that financial investment. And then third is this, who will I invite? So what's my position? How am I growing my giving? And who will I invite? Could you think of one person between now and Easter that you could invite with you? That you could invite to Meadow Park and say, man, over these next several weeks, there's a perfect series, perfect time. You got questions about faith? You want to know who we are? Let me, let, come, come to church with me. That's the mission that we're on. That's how we move the ball down the field. And it's exciting to think about the possibilities. Just coming back to that verse, Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Meadow Park, this is an exciting time. I, I, this has been my favorite year of ministry for the, of the church since I've been here. It's just a beautiful spirit in worship. I love the, the camaraderie and the vision that we share together with the staff and with the board. And we're seeing new faces and families and people connecting, faith growing. And I believe it is our time to get ready. And it's exciting to think about what God's going to do and what's going to happen and how he's working among us. And so I just, I just ask now that we would take some time as we close the day that we would pray. I often close in prayer, and I will again in a little moment, but I want all of us to be praying for what God is going to do in this place in this year because that's what it means to be together for the win. And so I've got six prayer prompts up here, and I'm going to divide us up by section to pray for this. So is it, 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 we've got six sections here through the church. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can already read ahead and see which section you are. So one, or one, two, three, four, five, six. And so th this section over here, right? I want you praying about reaching new people, salvations, and growth. Right? As, as we pray for God, continue to, to bring us people who we can 
just show who you are and to see lives transformed. That's what I want you praying for. The second group over here, pray for impact through our Renew initiative and through the remodeling, through the building, through the process. There's work that needs to be done for safety, for provision, for God to work and to allow these spaces to be filled with God's spirit. Pray for the Renew initiative over these next three years. And then this group over here, new people serving in our next-gen ministries. That next generation is so important, church. It is so important. And, and, and pray for folks to step into those, those roles serving our children, our youth, our college age. Over here, group four, impact through our Honduras missions trip. And you can also pray for our other ministries and the missions team as we expand that. But that trip and that team that is going this year. Group five, clarity for our local outreach signature focus. As we're looking to see, God, where are you moving through our church to make a, another impact in this community. Pray for that. And this last group over here, I want you to pray at six, generosity and uh, financial surplus for our ministry. There's something beautiful when there's resources to be able to do the things that God is calling us to do, and he's always faithful to provide, and just pray for that right now. So let's all just take some, a moment to pray, and then I will close us together in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's exciting on a day like this to be reminded of what we're capable of and what people and teams are capable of when they work together and share a mission and a purpose and camaraderie. Father, thank you that that's what you've called the church to be and even so much more. That you've called us to be a family, working and serving together and being on mission together. And what a beautiful mission you've given us, God, to, to make you known in this world to have people's lives and their hearts and their spirits just to, to find freedom and hope and forgiveness, new life, an anchor, a confidence in who you are. Father, I thank you for this church and the ministry over so many years that has impacted this community and blessed thousands of people. Father, we thank you for the newness that you are bringing, the renewal that is sweeping through. And God, we are getting ready for the harvest, the blessing that is to come that is already on our doorstep here, that we are experiencing together. Lord, we pray for continued blessing and favor from you. As we pray for these different areas in our church, as we pray for these new initiatives in this coming year, it's so exciting, God, to think about, to be a part of. And if we just imagine winding the clock ahead and thinking through being on the other side of some of these renewal projects, being on the other side of these missions trips and the life change that's happened, being on the other side of, of this next-gen ministry and launching that and seeing the new folks that have stepped in to serve and to, to love on kids and to pour into students and college students. Father, when we think about the impact through a signature ministry that we can have in this community, the connections on the mission field, God, new people coming to faith, those that we don't even know who are going to be baptized this year but that have come to faith in you. We know you go before us. And God, together, we want to serve you. Because ultimately, what's most important is for you to be front and center. And God, we know you will give us the win, the victory in you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.